Okay, good evening. This is Mark McNaught from Independence Live coming to you exceptionally on Wednesday, the 24th of, uh, of, Ju of uh, January. And I would like to speak today about the possibilities for restructuring the legal system in an independent Scotland to make it much preferable and more democratic to the one that is that is currently being used in the UK. Uh, and as you as you well know, the uh, the under the Acts of Union of 1707, uh, Scotland maintained its legal system, but since then it has uh, it, the there is no, there was for many years, of course, there was no Parliament which could make uh, Scottish law. So it was, in fact, the Westminster uh, Parliament which made Scottish law up until uh, 19, uh, 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 the late 1999 when the devolution settlement was established and Scotland got its own parliament to, uh, to legislate in certain devolved areas, and, of course, with the reserved areas being left to Westminster. So since then... Uh, Scot the Scottish Parliament has been able to affect those laws in the areas for which, of course, they have devolved powers, but of, but there are many other laws uh, which were made by the Westminster government, which, of course, they have no power over. The, the Scotland Act, for example, which sets about what powers it has, uh, and, of course, a whole raft of different types of legislation that have come out of Westminster over the past 300 years or so, uh, many, of, many of which uh, still remains in effect. And so, so what laws are applied in Scotland is a, is a combination of, well, you have European law because, of course, the UK is a member of the European Union. You have Scottish law and, you ha uh, and then you have the, the laws in the devolved areas as well. Now, when, inde uh, when independence would be achieved, this would be a, an opportunity to completely revamp the uh, the. the the legal system into something much more modern, accessible, and above all, democratic, so that people, uh, in, in individual citizens, have would have much greater access to the legal system and would not necessarily need to spend thousands of pounds on a lawyer whenever some legal issue came up. And and uh, and so what uh, I had been thinking is is instead of uh, now law as it. Uh, for example, in the United States and Westminster, of course, for mo uh, up until very recently, was all on, in books and, uh, you know, of course, on paper. And, of course, they, they would have to, you know, to consult the law, you'd have to have the books there and you'd have to look it up. And the way that laws are modified over time can be extremely confusing. If you're reading, uh, for example, if you're reading about, I don't know, divorce law or something like that, and then uh, so something more modern, and then and then often... The more modern bill will make reference to a previous bill without really explaining what exactly they're talking about. So you could have, for example, uh, uh, reading reading of a law uh, and saying, uh, and then it, in in, law, in re referring back to an earlier law, saying on this line change the word if to why or something like that. Where reading the actual law, you have absolutely no idea what it's what it says and uh and so you and you have to go back to the earlier law to make reference to kind of piece it together and that's what law lawyers are paid for is to kind of piece together the law and, and of course try to apply it in the most favorable fashion for their clients and so and uh, also a lot of the laws are um uh, let's just say obsolete uh, so many of the, but they're still applied, or they're st they still potentially can be enforced. You have heresy laws that are still in effect in the UK. You have many other, uh, you know, you know, basically medieval laws that uh, you know try to you know reinforce the social classes, with, whether it's you know primogeniture laws or this type of thing, which are which were very much intended to again to maintain the social hierarchy of dukes and lords and this type of thing and and keep the you know keep the lower classes very much in their place in terms of being able to travel and many other uh, things so what I would propose and um, and so and, and again these laws are only made are only rendered moot once there's a, a later law passed which modifies or abridges or eliminates the law in some way but you still have so many laws that that may not be applied uh, are extremely reg regressive and they're still on the books that could that uh, there's no reason why they couldn't be applied so what i would uh, and so once 
a yes vote is achieved, that gives the, the Scotland the possibility of setting up a completely new modern legal structure, what I would call the the corpus of Scottish law. And this could be done online. You can have uh, you know you can have the, all of the laws in a coherent legal uh, uh, legal code. Uh, it could be, of course, divided civil law, criminal law, divorce law, uh, you know, contract law. All of these things could be. Um, it could be, uh, uh, you know, could be established to where anyone can go online and read what the law is. If you're I don't know, building a house or what is legally necessary to this, legally necessary to that, some of it's available. But I, uh, to my knowledge, there isn't. Uh, well, it wouldn't exist. It doesn't exist in the same form that it would. In that, again, people can um, uh, go online uh, if they're getting divorced, for example. They can go and get the, you know, get all the documents and do and, and do a considerable amount. Uh, of, of of the legal means necessary, maybe getting a lawyer for some uh, things, but there, but again, it leaves uh, the opportunity for a much greater access to uh, the law, and so the, the so this uh, the, and this corpus of Scottish law also uh, it could be mandated in a constitution that the law be written is as easily uh, as easily comprehensible as possible and there could be a legislative stage for example so when the laws are being uh, modified or uh, that, that they can go and change the original wording whereas again if in the in the way that it's done now you have, again it's all sort of done on paper and you make references to earlier laws whereas if you had a, a, a corpus of laws that was uh, mandated to be uh, wrote, written as simply as possible it could go through a legislative legislative draft stage which would put the le the language into as clear as uh, a, a clear language as possible which would allow for um uh, which uh, which would allow for people you know anybody to understand of course there are very technical things for, with certain areas that are you know that that are de by definition complex but uh, but so much of the of the law of the present uk law could be so much uh more simply put more comprehensively put and therefore uh th therefore better uh, followed so my proposal again is to uh, is uh, it, and so it could be done in a way in which the uh, for example when it's similar to what they're trying to do at least with the uh, the Great Repeal Act with EU law uh, currently in the House of Commons uh, they're they're basically putting. EU law into domestic law, uh, into uh, domestic UK law, except uh, fundamentally, I don't believe they want to incorporate the, uh, the European Charter of Human Rights. That's the only thing they want to exclude for some reason. Uh, and so uh, Scotland could, uh, 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 could incorporate in this corpus of law, at least initially, UK law uh, and uh, European law, and then uh, and then be able to go through it uh, uh, and make and and, and uh, adjust it according to certain uh, criteria, but have it instead again instead of having it written in different books with different parts of laws and different drafts and this type of thing, it's all in one clear, coherent, accessible corpus of laws where and once the um, and, and once that's all, once the UK domestic, the current UK domestic law has been incorporated, then of course there's the opportunity for the Scottish Parliament to start going through it, rewriting it, uh, and amending it, and making it, you know, a much more, uh, much more democratic, accessible, understandable, etc. The, uh, the 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 law should not simply be the purview of those who have money to afford lawyers. It should be accessible to everyone, and having this corpus of of, of law would go a large a long way towards that in addition one of the advantages to this that I that I see is that you would be able to change uh, you, you would be able to change the text of the law more easily again as I stated earlier with the current the way the year the, the laws work currently in the UK again they have laws that modify further earlier laws uh, and then again you sort of have to piece them together whereas if you had it all written out clearly and coherently then you could make amendments to the wording of the laws and uh, and instead of like adapting a new law that kind of goes over another one uh, you can simply rewrite the text of the uh, the, the 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 you know the, the text of the law or this text of the corpus of the law to make it clearer 
In addition, that would enable there could be commissions, for example, which would study very uh, various aspects of the law and and suggest to changes to the corpus of law. Again, just changing the wording, not adding a separate law in itself to that. And that would enable, for example, different committees or different uh, or even citizens to suggest uh, changes uh, to the wording of the corpus of the law that could be later that could be you know le- legitimately ratified by uh, by the parliament. Uh, but so it, so the legislative the legislative process could be very much uh, designed to maintain itself in a certain way, and so that you uh, and uh, and also you could, it would be clearer that when uh, you went, uh, and you can have that with of course with the constitution, this corpus of Scottish law, and in addition all of the treaties to which Scotland would be signatory to, presumably the EU uh, law and charters, and. Um, and maybe the Earth Charter, which is a very innovative document. You can look that up on Google. But uh, I think uh, Scotland being signatory to the Earth Charter would be extremely um, uh, extremely beneficial and serve as an example to other states as well. Uh, so have a look at, again, have a look at the Earth Charter if you want to find out what I'm uh, speaking about. So... Um, so, uh, so in resume, uh, have once independence is achieved, there will be a, a period whereby a constitution is ratified. This series is a, is a, is, a uh, is an effort to be, begin that conversation about what could be in a written Scottish constitution. But one of those could be again the instead of having this uh, patchwork of different laws from different eras, from different you know centuries, that's all kind of pieced together in this you know legislative mess that 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 that, that is you know the 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 Westminster legal system that uh, that treats the different uh, countries differently uh, that that, that uh, and that uh, is thoroughly uh, thoroughly outdated and anachronistic and again uh, incorp uh, and be able to um, uh, simply uh, you know incorporate the existing uh, UK law to to give continuity to the, uh, the the legal system as well as the changes to the um, uh, th- as well as adopting EU law uh, assuming what happens with the European Union we don't know yet but there's a very high pot probability that they'll that, that they'll allow Scotland to stay in the EU at least in some form before becoming a formal member maybe within a couple of years we don't know you know and the, and, and the issue of Europe should be discoupled as much as possible from the actual independence process but there can be the you know the inclusion of EU law and the inclusion of UK law in the Scottish uh, uh, um, uh, corpus of laws initially, but then there can be an effort to completely recategorize it, reframe it, uh, put maybe have different categories of the law that were not predicted before. Whether it's privacy law, whether it's uh, again um, you know contract law, divorce law, all of these things that can be based at least initially on UK law, but over time can be gone through with a fine tooth comb by both legislators, commissioners, and, uh, people, commissions, and he, and there should be mechanisms for citizens to go through the law, the, the, the corpus of laws, and recommend changes. And uh, so that, uh, again, so that they can kind of crowdfund or crowdsource the uh, the the improvement of the legal system, of course, all having to be uh, uh, to be ratified by parliamentary uh, vote uh, in order to enact changes to the law. Changes to the constitution would have a higher standard or more difficult standard because uh, because uh, because of you know what a constitution is. But the law should be relatively easy and easily modifiable, and then and, and then also have things like no secret laws uh, that they, there shouldn't be laws that are secret or that are out of uh, public view. Maybe some exceptions for national security but uh, but you know all laws should be public uh, all laws should be pa- you know passed through the legislature you shouldn't have any of these Henry the eighth powers as they're trying to exert right now in the UK and uh, the legal system should be such that again it, it's it's accessible clear comprehensible well organized modifiable and uh, uh, and and uh, and accessible to all again uh, with the fundamental con- uh, the fundamental assertion that it should the law should be available and comprehensive to everyone so that there is truly equal access to the law we can you know and, and so these slogans that are are emitted as, as as somehow these truths like equality before the law they can be actually real and uh, enf- enforceable um 
and so and so in the constitution itself uh, there would be many things that would be uh, that would be uh, regulated by law generally speaking a constitution asserts more fundamental principles but often with the caveat that, as to be uh, as to be uh, detailed in law and so you have for example uh, the freedom of speech uh, what uh, and and then you have that as a fundamental constitutional principle a constitutional right but then the law will say how that right is enforceable and justiciable if you if you are uh, if you if you have <coughs> if your free speech rights have been violated what is the recourse and how under the law can you get legal uh, redress for infringements of freedom of speech or freedom of press or what or what have you and so having these uh, the, these uh, clearly detailed so that any citizen who feels that their rights have been violated and make them truly just justiciable not just slogans where if, if your right to privacy has been violated you can be uh, you can get redress easily. Uh, a good example is the press right now. Uh, I'll, be, I'll be speaking to Craig Murray in a few minutes, and he knows all about uh, libel law and how uh, and, and and invasions of privacy in that respect, and how maybe the the, the laws can be improved to uh, to make it more fair for people who, who by the for example by the uh, by the British press who've had their privacy rights violated or splashed all over the, the you know the, the the tabloid headlines etc. That you know anybody should be able to easily get redress rather than simply having to make some complaint to Ofcom that takes months or and is never definitely resolved. Resolve, definitively resolved. So there's a lot of, again, there's a, a, a huge amount of possibilities for making the law more, uh, more, more fair, more, uh, more open, more transparent. And I think this idea I have of, of uh, developing a corpus of Scottish law that, again, is well organized, um, coherent, well written, clearly written, as under, as simply written as is humanly possible, while not losing the obviously technical things that may be required, technical aspects that, that are undoubtedly required in certain types of law, depending on what it's regulating. Uh, you know, aff affirming a commitment to incorporate EU law, and to and so when the EU law or other law is handed down, or and also people can see if there is a, a, a contradictions between the law and the constitution or treaties, and these things could be you know there could be me democratic mechanisms for raising these issues uh, of, of if there's again if there's a wording in a law that it would seem to go contradictory to the uh, to treaties or the constitution or EU law or whatever else Scotland is signed up to uh, abiding their law abiding under that even any citizen can say hey wait this isn't right you know you should be able this doesn't this doesn't comport to the constitution and there should be uh, you know mechanisms established whereby these things can be uh, addressed and rectified relatively easily uh, without having to you know uh, the the whole question of taking things to court a uh, laws to court they could be, it could be more um, it could, you know it could be more streamlined and more democratic Okay, so those are my thoughts. Uh, I'll be again. I'll be speaking to Craig Murray after this uh, speech, after, uh, but please feel free to send on your comments or questions for uh, Craig and I in this particular domain of, uh, of, of 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 Scottish law and how it could be uh, how it can be different. I look very much speaking to Craig, uh, given his uh, vast experience within the British state. I'm sure he, he'll have plenty of ideas for uh, for how uh, uh, UK law can be uh, much improved. Upon and more fairer, more democratic within uh, a, a, a corpus of Scottish law within an independent Scottish republic. So, with that, thank you very much, and we sh I, uh, and um, again, I look forward to the discussion with Craig.